Good. Today I'm going to talk you through the water purification required practical. This practical you will need to know for your GCSEs. So this practical is actually split into three activities and I will start off by explaining activity one. In front of me, I've got all the equipment we need for activity one. I've got the four different samples of water, I've got a spotting tile, four different pipettes for each of the water samples, the universal indicator, and the pH scale to check our results. So first of all, I have seawater. I'm going to use the pipette to drop a few drops of the sample into the spotting tile. You don't need too much, you'll just fill it halfway. And now I'm going to put in a spring water sample. and lastly, distilled water. We are now going to test the pH of each of these samples using universal indicator. So to the samples that we've put into the spotting dial, I will drop a drop of the universal indicator. We can see a colour change straight away. For the results, all you need to do is check them against the pH scale. I'm going to talk you through the results. Over here we have the seawater, which matches up with pH 5, which is a weak acid. Then we have spring water, which matches up with pH 3, which is a stronger acid. And we have rainwater over here, which matches up with pH 0, which is the strongest acid. And lastly, we have distilled water, which matches up with pH 4, which is also a weak acid. I'm now going to talk you through activity two. First thing we need to do is weigh a clean, dry watch glass. So make sure that the balance is at zero before placing the watch glass on. We then need to write down the mass of the balance onto our results table. So it is 0 0.956. I've just set up the tripod and the gauze on top of a heat proof mat. And I pre-filled this beaker about roughly halfway with water just from the tap and this will act as our water bath. What we need to do now, onto a watch glass that we pre-measured, we're gonna roughly measure out four milliliters of our sample. So firstly, we're gonna use seawater. Let me just do that now. So we're gonna use a measuring cylinder. We need to come down to eye level to make sure it is the right amount. And that's perfect. Place the watch glass on top of the beaker and pour our sample. We will now move the Bunsen burner over to underneath 
the beaker, but obviously we need to make sure that we change the safety flame onto the roaring flame. And we need to make sure that our water bath does not run dry. So we're just evaporating the water and the solid will then be left behind. Okay, now that all the water has been evaporated, I'm going to take the watch glass off the water bath using tongs and place it on top of a paper towel so all the excess water can be removed before placing it on the balance. Okay, we now need to measure the mass of both the dissolved solid and the watch glass, but we need to make sure that we start off with the balance on zero. Okay, that is 0 0.958, so we need to record that value onto our table and we need to calculate the difference. You will then need to repeat the steps for activity two for the remaining three water samples, so spring water, rain water and distilled water. I will now talk you through activity three, which is the desalination of seawater. Firstly, what we need to do is pour the rest of the seawater sample into the conical flask. I will then add some anti-bumping granules into the solution. And we do this to stop the seawater from spitting. We put the bung on top. Cut. We've just placed the bung on top of the conical flask and secured the neck of the conical flask with a clamp, just so it does not move. We will then change the flame to the roaring flame and place it underneath the conical flask. As we do that, I will place the test tube under here so it can collect the distilled water. The test tube is also placed in a water bath of ice cold water. While this is boiling, key thing, you need to make sure that the seawater is boiling gently. You then stop the Bunsen burner once you've collected about two centimetres cubed of sample. This sample, you then need to do activity one and two. <laughs> I have now turned the Bunsen burner off. You need to turn it off once you have collected about two centimeters cubed of your sample. With this sample that you've collected, you need to repeat activity one and activity two again. So activity one again is to check the pH and activity two would be to collect any solids remaining.